Hello everyone and welcome to a very unique episode of the Yarn and You Girl podcast. I'm Janine, also known as Yarn and You Girl, and this is my channel where I chat about everything crafty and crazy going on in my life. I want to apologize because it's been a very long time since I've done an episode. I had have really not a great excuse for it. Um, I did have some issues with my computer, so I can definitely blame it partly on that. Uh, my old computer that I used to do the video on and all of my other things on had broke and it would kind of work but not work very often and it would overheat and so I finally got a new computer for Christmas which is great. Uh, the new computer is an Apple which I have not had an Apple before so I'm going to be learning all about how to do stuff on this computer as opposed to my old PC that I had but so that's only part of the reason why I haven't been able to see you guys the other part of the reason is I did start a full-time position as a pharmacist um, it's pretty nice gig though it's not super stressful it's just Monday through Friday 9 to 5 but I am kind of adjusting to the change in schedule and how to like do all manage all of my time and I haven't been doing a very good job of managing it clearly because I am in the car now driving with well my husband's driving and I am in the car doing a podcast for you guys because I felt I needed to do a podcast and this was one of the only times I felt I had so anyway that being said that's a lot I'm really happy to be here and I'm happy to share latest the latest things that I've been doing and a lot of it is um, purchasing of yarn. I have been less inspired um, to actually make anything recently and more in trying to find that inspiration in, in good yarn choices. So I do have some finished objects though and one of them I can't even believe I didn't, well I guess I published it, a pattern for a sweater, uh, the Marley sweater, in uh, September, or no excuse me, in October and the last time I did a podcast was in September and I remembered wanting to do a podcast right after I published it but that was when everything was happening with the computer and the breakage of it so uh, it didn't really work out but I brought the Marley sweater today so I can show you what it looks like it is a um, raglan style sweater it's marled you hold three strands of yarn together and it's right here this is my um, I think I might have shown you guys while I was working on it, but I'm not sure. So you hold three strands of fingering weight yarn together to make it kind of like a bulky or Aran weight sweater, and you pepper these little star patterns throughout. So I'm pretty sure I showed you guys while I was working on this, but it's actually out and published now on Ravelry, and it's called the Marley, and it's a really great way to use up scraps and um, just kind of be creative. Uh, don't, you, you know, I didn't matchy matchy anything. I went mismatched arms. I just kind of grabbed and I did, I held one color throughout to kind of give it a cohesive bit, but the rest of it was all um, just trading in and out and fading in between colors. So it was a really fun project, easy, fast, because you use very big needles and it's one of my most favorite sweaters. The white I used in here was an alpaca. So it's a little, sorry, super bumpy in the car. <laughs> We're getting on the freeway now, so hopefully it will be a little less bumpy. I'm gonna wait until, so I don't like lose the computer. Anyway, so the uh, white in here is an alpaca and it is very fuzzy and sheds quite a bit. I wore this yesterday when I went out and I had little puffs of white like everywhere I went. Stuck to my purse, stuck in the car, but I love it, it's very cozy. And I'd had that alpaca for years. We had bought, we had gone to Hood River to look at an alpaca farm and they had a little shop there and I ended up buying quite a bit of this white alpaca because it was so soft and and it just ended up sitting in my closet of yarn for a long time and I finally thought oh if I held it together with something give it a little bit more 
um, it would just add that base that I needed for this sweater. So anyway, it is available, the sweater pattern on Ravelry and it's called the Marley if you guys are interested. I really enjoyed making it and I know that the people who test knit it for me enjoyed making it as well. So that's that, one finished object, yay! I actually have another one too. I also decided um, during October, Stephen West does his mystery knit along, his shawl mystery knit along, and this year it was shawlography, I believe. Um, so I decided to kind of jump on that as well and do that, and I, I did finish it. It's back here also. It is the craziest shawl I have ever made. It's quite bright. I feel a little um, circus clown when I wear it. <laughs> but I loved all the colors together. It's just so beautiful. And I just used um, everything I used except for this multi right here was stuff that I had in the shop or stuff that I had dyed myself. So the pink was uh, Ba La Jolla in the Frambois colorway. And the yellow is O Loops Girl with the Pineapple Earrings. The green is My Hand Dyed, um, so Yarn and You. It's on um, the Mintastic colorway. The purple was also Ba La Jolla, and this is in Summer Lilac. And then this one, which is one I don't carry, was a um, Cat Sandwich Fibers. And I think it was called Chiffon Dress. So I used, those were the five colors I used. I followed the pattern exactly. Um, the only issue I had was there's a color work section here. And it's very tight compared to the rest of the shawl. Even after blocking it, I can feel that it doesn't stretch or give nearly as much as the rest of the shawl. But it looks okay. It just doesn't have that same um, stretch. It's not bouncy in that spot like the rest of it. It's just very um, a little tight. And you can tell that the, it's because my floats were a little bit tighter. I've always struggled quite a bit on color work and making sure um, that my floats were loose enough so that the, the fabric ends up being the right lay it doesn't end up being too tight because a lot of times with um, color work I end up being way too tight but it was very fun I very much disliked the border because it took forever it is beautiful but um, it did take a really long time and I as much as I love bobbles this row took me forever as well <laughs> um, it just ended up being very big but it was fun to knit. It gave me something to do. I had had this yarn set aside for another project, another Stephen West shawl, but I decided that I would, you know, play along with the knit along, which is always very fun and it's inspiring to see other people's projects. So I always enjoy doing that. Uh, I usually cheat though and wait until I've seen clue one and clue two before I decide if I'm going to participate. So I'm not really a huge fan of mystery in case I don't like it. This way, if I cheat and, and watch the, like, the spoilers, I can say, okay, I might like it, I might not like it, that looks interesting, um, and I can make a decision for myself and not have jumped, like, right into something that I'm not going to be happy with. But it was very fun. And that's Stephen West Shawlography. Like I said, it's quite big. I don't know if you guys can hear me very well. I hope you can hear me very well. If you can't, we're just going to have to redo this episode again. The car, I hear car noises. I don't know if you're hearing car noises. We'll see. So that is the last finished object I have. I've just got two. I have worked on a, I did work on a little tiger that I gave just yesterday to my niece. She's turning one on Friday and um, I knit her this stuffed tiger and I'll see if I can insert a picture of it here so that you can see what it looks like. 
hopefully that worked. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, so that is the other um, finished object I did. The tiger was super cute. Um, right off the top of my head, I cannot remember who. It's like Palushka Knits or something like that. I'll have to look it up because it's a very odd um, name. I happened to find her, I think I saw one on Instagram, and she does all these cute little stuffies. And it was very well written. There were YouTube tutorials to follow along to make sure that, you know, you had everything kind of just right. It did require some intarsia, which I hadn't done in a while, but that's always, um, it's not as hard as I think I make it out to be in my head before I start. It's a little bit of yarn management because with intarsia you're working, uh, you have to have a couple different balls of yarn that you're working with in the row so that, um, things can be kind of cohesive. So that is a little bit challenging. You have to kind of manage how much you've got for this particular section and each separate colored section has to have its own strand of yarn. But the actual process of knitting it is not hard. So I enjoyed that quite a bit because I hadn't done anything like that in a really long time. Um, years back I made my son a Seattle Seahawks hat that had the Seahawk um, logo on it and I did it in intarsia on that hat and that was my first attempt at intarsia and it was very fun but again the yarn management was kind of tricky so if you are interested though in doing that it's you should try it it's not as hard as it seems I think a lot of people avoid it um, but I would much rather do intarsia I think my color work is better in intarsia than it is with stranded color work so that's just me though because I've had trouble I know you guys know I've had trouble with my my color work so that those are the things that I finished now I have been working on some other things let me reach back here and grab a couple more project bags so I can show you how to get them all okay so I promised both of my boys that I would make them a pair of socks and it's slow going, but I do have Jordan's pair almost finished. So Jordan is my oldest son. He is going to turn 16 here in uh, a couple months in May. And I had the boys, both of the boys, look at my yarn stash and pick out a skein of yarn that they wanted their socks to be in. So he picked this one. This is a Knitted Wit. Um, it is the color is Wither Wings, and it's a little bit heavier. I think it was a fingering, but it's, it's fairly heavy. Like, for a boy's foot, usually I do 72 inches for the sock, and this one I ended up only doing 64, which is my normal sock, because when I did 72, it was huge. Um, and I also did, so I just did a toe up, version because I wanted to make sure I had enough to you know cover his foot because it's fairly big and then um, I kind of like go and see how much I had for the leg and I just kind of used what I had for that half a ball and then um, I did use an OMG heel on this one I tried to use the Flegel heel uh, but it ended up being really gappy on him and I don't know if it's just the gauge of the fabric that made it quite big, but the OMG heel seemed to work okay for him on that one. So I did that. And then this is the second sock. And look at this, look at how different this is. So this was the same ball of yarn, but this is so much lighter than this one. And you can kind of see where like maybe this was the outside of the ball or outside of the yarn when she was dyeing it and so the inner part of the the skein didn't get quite as heavily colored so it definitely looks they're a little mismatchy and it's really bad now that I'm looking at them but I don't think Jordan will care too much hopefully he won't care we'll see I think he'll wear them regardless but I am already past the 
heel on this one, so I would just have to work on the legs. But I bet I've been having some finishing trouble lately. I get really close to the end of the project and then I'm like, nah, <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know if it's just like I'm afraid to finish it because I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know. I just need to finish it. I just need to, to put in the time. It's very close. I maybe have like, I don't know, three inches left to do. So, but I got in, you know, I, I started something else because I wanted to use some other yarn that I had gotten. So I did start another project, but this is, I keep this with me um, because it's right now it's just stockinette. So it's not something I have to think about. So if I am someplace where I need to be focusing on multiple things at a time, this is something I can do kind of subconsciously without having to deal with a pattern or anything. So that works for that. I did start a design pattern. This is yarn that I've been wanting to use for a while too. Um, I got inspired by Michelle from the Naughty Knitwits to check out this gal's yarn, Shirley Bryan. So Shirley Bryan yarn. She's in Canada and she did these deconstructed fade kits. So you have their 250 gram skeins. Let me see if I can get this out without. And they're kind of a gradient, basically a gradient set, but they match. So I started on these and I'm planning on making these um, like as I'm just gonna go as high as I can go on the leg and so if that makes them like a knee sock or a, a high um, calf sock then that's fine too I might have to adjust the patterning on the back I was talking to Matt the other day about what my plan is so right now I have this cabled pattern going on the front somebody honked and I don't know if that was at us but <laughs> right now I have a cable pattern going on the front um, it's just a nice little cable repeat and I really like the texture of it and it gives a nice snug fit on the foot and I'm working on the heel gusset right now I'm doing a flegal heel uh, so it has a nice fit but I felt like if I when I get to the leg if I start doing the leg and I'm patterning it all around it might not be it's gonna be tight probably and I think I want to give it a little bit more flexibility so I'm thinking the from the heel up the front will be the pattern and the back I'm gonna do like a rib um, maybe even like a, a broken rib or something I'm just not quite sure yet uh, but something that has some stretch so that as it grows up my leg it will accommodate and then I can also add increases for the calf to adjust for that size too because I really want the whole of the fade to show in this sock uh, so that's the a new pattern that I'm working on I don't have a name for it yet but I am really enjoying it and I did like my standard toe up it's basically like increased every round for like four or five rounds starting at you know you start at 12 and then I increase every round for a bit and then I increase every other round for a bit and then I increase every two rounds because I, I like that um, the look it gives it's kind of a longer toe than some of the other ones and it, I just I just like it so so that's that pair of socks and that's Shirley Bryan yarn and the, the colorway for this one is pour myself a cup of ambition which always reminds I think is from that Dolly Parton nine to five song so that is that pair of socks I've got two pairs of socks right now going on I don't have my other son Dylan's socks in the works just yet uh, but I do have his yarn all picked out and I'm all tangled here hang on so I have his yarn all picked out. So as soon as I finish Jordan's, I will start working on his. And he has um, a darker navy blue yarn. It's a little bit 
thinner gauge than the Wither Wings knitted wit yarn, so I might have to go up in um, numbers to do his sock. This foot's about the same size, but this yarn for Jordan is much thicker. It's more sport versus fingering, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I also have been working on, I think I've shown you guys this as well. I've been working on Junction, the Junction sweater. Um, this is an Andrew and Mowry. And I've finished the whole body and I just have arms to do. And I went and put the needles on this arm and tried to start, but I wasn't really paying attention to what I, the pattern, I was just kind of going. So I, I realized that, you know, oh wait, I need to follow the pattern and see what I'm doing here. And then I just um, lost steam for a bit because I didn't, I wasn't feeling like following a pattern. <laughs> and so I need to figure out, you know, where I am, pick this back up up again because I really like to finish it. I'm hoping it will fit okay. I think that's also part of the problem is I put it on and I feel like the body does fit. It's a little big, which I think is fine, but I'm not 100% sure um, if I'm going to like the way that it fits. So I got a little stymied, but I'm going to finish it. It's a lovely sweater. It's a lovely yarn. I'm using um, Olan in, uh, I think it's Miaria, I want to say. I can't remember if I've got, I don't know if I have a tag in here. Maybe I have a tag. Probably not. It's quite nice though. It's, I've used it for my Calliope sweater. I think I showed you guys that. It was this, um, olive green sweater that I held double with some um, mohair. I think it's a mohair silk. And it just was a lovely, it's a lovely yarn to work with. It's fairly rustic, but not so much so that it feels very itchy. I think it's 100% merino. Um, and it's not super wash or anything. So it definitely has some structure, which I like about it. So I really need to kind of get on it and finish this too. Oh, I guess I do have another finished object too. I was just thinking about that and it's in the box that I brought. So I'll have to grab that here in a minute. Um, cause I think that's all my works in progress, but let's see. Yes, I do have one more. So another pair of socks that I finished and let me turn these right side out. I think. Oh no, these are right side out. So, um, Andrew Mowry put out a pattern. It's her DRK everyday socks and it's just like this ribbed sock. So this is kind of my um, inspired version of that. I didn't buy her pattern. I already, you know, know how to do flegal heel, but I really was curious about putting the ribbing on the base of the foot and I wanted to see how that went. It fits fairly nice. I just used my own numbers and my own um, ribbing style. I think it's very similar to what she does. She does in her pattern, but um, I feel like she does something different. I saw somebody just finished theirs and they had, there were like some ribs this way too on the gusset and I didn't do any ribs on the gusset, but I did start the ribbing on the heel here, which I might, might be different. I don't know. Um, but so I finished a pair of those and I was thinking I'd do something, a rib, some version like this for Dylan's socks as well, because I think that would give, you know, give me some flexibility to maybe keep the number of stitches the same for my socks and then just have um, the ribbing to accommodate his foot size. And this is um, Desert Vista Dye Works. It's her Boom Chicka Boom colorway. Um, based off the children's book, Boom Chicka Boom, I think. Um, and I used my own, um, this is, this pink is one that I dyed and I'm trying desperately to remember the name of it right now. I can't, I can't remember the name of it, which is really bad. But I don't, 
don't have all my notes. I don't have any. This is like I said, a fly by the seat of my pants in the car podcast. So, but it, they do fit really nice. I actually was not bothered at all by the ribbing on the foot. In fact, after wearing them, these have been worn after wearing them. I can tell that this part is um, not as um, stretchy or springy as the top part of the foot because I've been stepping on it like all day and so it flattened out the stitches quite a bit but I didn't notice a lot of difference as far as that goes um, in the feel of it. I know some people are very particular about what they put on the bottom of their feet so it could you know be real sensitive for some people but for me it was fine didn't bother me at all. Okay. The only problem is, um, you know, which way is inside out, which way is right side out. <laughs> but I can tell that by the stock in it on the toes. But I keep looking at this one going, no, it's inside out. It's inside out. No, it's not. And it could be just the way that I did the heel. Like it looks like I've got seams that on the one side so anyway we are traveling to pick up our bar barn doors today so that's why I'm doing this right now I did go yesterday and I wanted to give a shout out um, to the lovely ladies at the Naughty Lamb in Forest Grove it was so much fun so yesterday Matt decided to surprise me and take me out on a little like mini yarn crawl tour thing. So super fun. Um, I'd never been out to Naughty Lamb. I'd been wanting to go there out in Forest Grove and from where I live it's about an hour drive. So we went out there first and I spent a good amount of time in there chatting with Holly and Leslie and they're both very nice lovely ladies. Um, I'm definitely it's definitely worth the drive to go out there again. Uh, if I need something they have a great selection of yarn um, just a really cozy, warm atmosphere, and like I said, lovely, lovely ladies. So they, um, we went out there, and I spent a good deal of time there, and I got um, quite a bit of yarn there. I made sure to have like projects in mind, and most of this is like where I needed that, like I needed inspiration for things. I've been wanting to make some things. I've seen some projects. I just didn't feel like ready because I didn't feel like I had what I wanted or how I wanted that finished project to look so now that I have a little bit um, now that I have some things in mind that I want to make I'm feeling a little more um, ready to kind of jump jump on the needles and get going so um, I did buy a couple different things from them just a couple so they have barnyard knits there and so I bought some of the DK and bought three skeins of this cozy cottage and I think I'm gonna use this for one of knit graffiti does a lot of brioche shawls and I think there's a brioche shawl that she does in DK that I bought a while back I'm not sure what the name of it is uh, oh wait no I think it's Don Donita um, I think that's the name of it I'll have to check and I can put it in the um, down bar here just to, if I'm completely off I'll correct myself um, so it uses DK and it's a triangle shawl and so I bought this but I didn't buy a complementary color but I was thinking oh well I'll just buy three and I'll just do a shawl or something with it so I ended up finding some a complementary color what I hoped was a complementary color at another um, yarn place after going to Naughty Lamb but so I got this though and Naughty Lamb. I got three of them. The other one is somewhere. I also have been wanting to make that sur it's surf and turf is the name of the pattern. And it is a shawl and it's worked. And I think the gal is Nitty McPurley who designed it. But again, I don't know off the top of my head. So I will correct myself if it is not right. But it is called surf and turf. I had bought it yesterday. I'd been looking at it for a while, but I thought, oh, I'll buy the shawl and then pattern. And then when we go, I can decide, you know, see if I can find some yarn to go for it. I really loved her color version. She does like this creamy white or beige 
and then she does a bunch of um, different uh, colored sections on the one side so there's like a garter section and then the other half of the shawl is like a almost like feather and fan with um, garter ridges in between and each feather and fan section is like a different color or a contrast she uses like five different contrast colors so I found and it's a sport or a DK weight so this is gonna this is blown out really bad but I've just found this creamy white um, this is Walcott yarns which I never heard of before um, and this is the splashed white so this is gonna be the main color uh, this is a sport weight. Wow, there's a boat right there. <laughs> we just passed this like totally ghetto boat, like just on the side of the road. Looked like it had capsized. Or not capsized, but come aground. Um, anyway, so I've got three skeins of this for the main color. Oh, this is very bumpy road. And then I've got this teal um, color. This is spearmint. I got a black, which is charcoal, and a pink. This one is taffy, and the orange is oh, I can't read it. Apparel. I think it's not spelled like apparel, like clothing. It's spelled a p e r o l. And then the last contrast color is this yellow, which is Bumblebee. So I thought all of those contrast colors together looked really fun and bright. And it's definitely, um, it's not exactly the same as what she did for hers, but it has the right vibe that I wanted and it's close. So I'm very excited to get started on this. I'm needing, making myself, I'm gonna finish something first before I jump into something else. So I'll go through, you know, either finish Jordan's socks, finish my sweater or something, and then try to cast on this. I also, so after we went to Naughty Lamb, we went to the Abernathy Grange, which is in Oregon City, and they were doing like this little fiber festival yesterday. It was just yesterday. It was very small, mostly, um, raw fiber or um, fiber that had been you know is ready to, for spinners but they did have a couple um, like spun up yarn booths that you could purchase from so I uh, the first booth I came to was this one and it's um, Boss Kitty and she had some lovely hand dyed yarn and I love her little logo here this is really cute. So this is the color I got to go as the backdrop for this shawl. So hopefully that will work okay and it will turn out great. And that is, that was the only other thing I purchased was three skeins of this soot color to go with my barnyard knits. But um, yeah, so I'm here though at the uh, door place to pick up my barn doors. So I'm going to have to let you guys go, um, but that's pretty much everything I had anyway. So I just wanted to tell you guys I have been missing you and I will definitely try to get back on here more, but I'm, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. So I'm just going to try to live in the moment. And if I've got a moment, I'm going to share it with you guys. Thanks so much. See you later. Bye.